Amir mentioned um, sun water. So what sun water is is what we're calling our PV water heating solution. Now you, me, you heard me a lot earlier talking about how PV wasn't as efficient as solar thermal, so don't use it for solar applications. But you also heard me say how um, picking the right um, product and the, and the right technology for the right application is the key. Right? Longevity of renewable energy is the secret to success, and so you've got to make sure that that happens. Right? And so what we we um, so we came up with sun water. Um, PV water heating solution. So there are a few PV water heating solutions out there. You know, we like to say that whatever we do at Sun Earth, we do it just a little bit better and, and a little, last a little bit longer. And so, based upon the ratings returned by SRCC, we're about twice the efficiency of the equivalent um, PV water heater that's already out there in the market. How is that? How did, why? Controls. So, um, the other PV water heating solution has no controls. And we have a full touch ring control, multiple operation modes that, you know, really the key is to allow you to harness the energy um, um, efficiently and as much of it as possible, right? Because PV is this sort of... Um, the PV sales people are marketing these and that cuts into our thermal solar business. Absolutely. So we, um, tell everyone that they don't work and we change them out with solar thermals when people complain about their lack of efficiency. Yep. And so that's, they're completely against our whole philosophy. So maybe let me tell you what the application is where I believe that this works and the, in my opinion, the only application where this works, right? And it's how we're marketing it out there to the, to the industry, right? And so our, our, this is our solution for low and variable occupancy applications, right? So if you have a, a, a um, you know, someplace with only two people living in a house, you know, maybe two elderly people or something like that, they don't use a lot of water, even if you put like a single 4 by 8 on there, it's going to be blowing off valves, it's going to be overheating most of the time and Not cause a lot of... Not that. Okay. <laughs> oh, right. You know. <laughs> so, Drainback is a great solution to that, right? Not, not everybody does Drainback, not everybody knows how to do Drainback. Also, variable occupancy applications, right? Where, e you know, where even a 4 byte collector might be too big, might be too much, you still have the cost of running pipes, which, unless the IBEW gets their way, usually wires are cheaper and quicker and easier to run, right? Um, so this is a great way to meet that segment, in our opinion, it right now is underserved um, product-wise. So, um, also to mention, we'll mention a little bit later, so this is what we call a hybrid dual electric source water heater. So the PV in this particular product does not touch the grid. It's two completely different circuits, different elements, different everything. So you don't have any interconnection um, problems that you could have with PV depending on what part of the country you're in or what jurisdiction you're in or anything else like that. So, um, Two of the elements take the uh, PV electricity to 1kW elements, and then we have a backup 4.5kW element attached to the grid. So, as I said earlier, some of the challenges with traditional liquid solar water heating um, are excessive stagnation temperatures leading to increased maintenance. Now, despite drain back, which I love, right, our blue thermal ray panels can reach up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, right, and then be cooled if all of a sudden the system turns on to 100 degrees, right. And, and we, we do our best in order to make a very robust, very reliable product. And I think most people in the industry recognize us for that. But if you're going to take something and put it there, so that sort of cycle pattern, it will have a shorter life than if you didn't. Right? So even in a drainback application, if you do a very low usage where that collector is going to stagnate for most of the summer and then all of a sudden get shot with, with cold water, it is going to have a little bit of challenge. I'm sure all of the dream back guys have heard the rumblings and the jumblings <clears> in the pipes as the stuff's steaming through and all that sort of stuff. So That's the fun part. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, this gets away from that. Um, so, summarize really quickly, you know, um, if we're talking low lows, because we're talking about the inefficiency of a PV panel compared to a thermal panel, um, it, the load has to be low, otherwise the solar fraction and all that sort of stuff, the actual um, percentage of the energy that you're getting from the system reduces really fast, right? So for a two-person household, if you're assuming the ASHRAE standard of 15 gallons per day of hot water, um, that's about 30 gallons or 4.8 kilowatt hours, right? Um, if this particular product uses 4 295 watt 
um, PV modules, and in that, if you were to take the PV watts data mm -hmm. for Long Beach, that would be about a 90% solar fraction for two people, right? But it's four pounds. But these tanks are like 45 gallons. 45, and yeah, we call them 50. <clears throat> so they're small. They're, they're meant for that application, right? Um, if you have a three-person household, same deal. You get down to 61.1% solar fraction. So everything seems to fall pretty quickly once you get bigger loads. It's not the cost. Cost? That's your man. Yeah, so you, you know, 